Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Phil Kramer. Thank you for watching. Before I start, I'm going to thank the people who helped me organize this. But while I do that, uh, I want you to all get a pen and paper to write down some information that I'm going to be going over. For those of you on Facebook, I posted the information today and it's titled um, web slash phone resources. Uh, it's also on the mayorkramer.com website, M-A-Y-O-R-K-R-A-M-E-R.com website. Some rules or at least some requests. You can make comments on Facebook, uh, but please hold off until we call for questions. Um, we want to avoid clutter. So just ask questions, not comments uh, when we're doing that, uh, because Mr. Steinbrook is going to be trying to pull the questions off that come that way. Um, you can also feed questions in through Tapped Into and uh, the Franklin Reporter and Advocate. Uh, we have limited time, so we'll try to consolidate questions. We are considering doing this uh, another in a week or so from now. Um, and after the meeting, comment if you prefer Facebook or if you'd like us to try Zoom. Uh, if we have technical guilt difficulties, uh, I will re we will reconvene this tomorrow at 7. If my guests can't make it back by then, that's okay. I haven't heard her uh, ring in yet. Do we have Freeholder Director Chanel Robinson? Okay, we'll get her uh, later. I know Councilman Will Galtieri is on, Superintendent John Ravalli, uh, Manager Bob Bornlocker, um, Lieutenant Phil Rizzo, and then from the Franklin Reporter, Bill Bowman, and from tap into we have michael lyons so first my thank yous i'd like to thank michael steinbrook um, who has done a huge amount of technical work to get this town hall meeting going uh, and getting my facebook up to speed i now know more about groups and pages and profiles than i ever wanted to know um, but i have to thank him for that ed Potasnik and uh, jessica levine sullivan also helped uh, Bill Bowman of the Franklin Reporter gave some technical advice as well. And I, I can't remember how it happened, but between he and Michael and I uh, came up with this idea of doing this. Uh, Might have started with Bill. Uh, I'd like to thank Bill and Malik, uh, Bill of Franklin Reporter and Malik of Tapped Into for covering this. Uh, Donna Frazzo Lissy uh, did a lot of work getting the word out. Um, and then Councilman Wright helped as well. I'd like to thank the staff, uh, Safi and Krista, for all the work they did getting this up. And then uh, my wife has been acting as my staff and has rec resurrected my website, which is echoing my Facebook posts. So please tell people who don't have Facebook accounts but do have internet uh, to go to mayorkramer.com. Uh, okay, let's really start. Clearly we are going through an unprecedented time. None of us ever expected anything like this. We all need to chip in and do our part. We've all heard much of what I'm talking, most of you have heard much of what I'm gonna be talking about, but it's important to emphasize. Let's start with stay at home to the maximum extent possible. We need to flatten the curve. You don't have to leave, if you don't have to leave the house, don't. Work from home if it's at all possible. You can go out for walks or runs or similar things, but keep your social distancing six feet apart. If you witness people uh, ignoring the social distancing at a particular location like a park, call the police. Um, if, if you're in Franklin, the police are gonna respond and they're gonna get people to move on. Uh, if you believe a place of business is ignoring the governor's order, uh, there is an online form accessible through the main page of covid19.nj.gov. That's covid19.nj.gov. And this is an incredible website. Um, it has medical information, economic information, business information, legal information. Uh, it, they really did a good job putting this all in one space. Uh, and if you are looking for a job, they have uh, 
uh, employers who are looking for help. And if you are an employer, you can use that site to advertise for workers. There's also uh, near the top in the center, you there is a, uh, uh, a button that says Feel, uh, feeling unwell, check your symptoms. And you can go through an algorithm there. Don't be scared by the word algorithm. You just answer some questions and it will advise you what to do medically, whether you need to go to the hospital, whether you should stay at home, uh, whether you're fine to go out. Um, I really can't overemphasize this site. So if you want to report price gouging, call 973-504-6000. Five zero four six two four zero, and again, you can go to my webpage or mayorkramer.com, and you can get this information uh, there um, under um, web and phone resources. If you have uh, clinical questions, you can call eight hundred nine six two one two five three. That's twenty four seven eight hundred nine six two one two five three, and yet, then for general questions about the virus, call 211, 211. That's from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. All right, beyond staying at home, wash your hands. I mean, this is the rudimentary stuff, but this is, uh, this is the tools we have. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, um, six foot separation, cough it into your sleeve or better yet into a tissue uh, and then throw away the tissue clean and disinfect surfaces frequently. We all want to get our hands on hand sanitizer if you can't get it, but hand sanitizer isn't as good as soap and water, especially if your hands are dirty um, or greasy. Obviously, it's more convenient, but uh, soap and water works better. Um, my favorite post uh, that I've done on Facebook, okay, excuse me, someone is actually calling me. Um, okay, my favorite Hello, post, oh, thank you, uh, Priola Director, uh, glad you're on, we'll, we'll let you talk in a little bit. So my favorite post on Facebook goes like this, you need to assume everyone you encounter has the virus, everyone. You need to assume when you encounter anyone that you are a carrier and could, con could infect them. So people are often asking me, is there a cluster in Franklin? Which house has the infection? I don't want to go near there. It doesn't matter. You need to assume everyone is infected and that you are infected, but asymptomatic. They could spread it to you. You could spread it to them. Um, people are urged not to go to the emergency room with mild symptoms. If you have symptoms, call your doctor first. They may want to have you come in to when the waiting room is empty. Um, the same applies when you go to the hospital. Try to call the hospital first. If you have symptoms and you can't afford a doctor, the nearest place that you might want to go is Zufall Health Center. That's Z-U-F-A-L. And again, this is all on the site and the page. 973-328-3344. 973-328-3344. And there's one located in Somerville. Um, to find other ones, if you're watching from somewhere other than Franklin, uh, there's a 24 hour, hour, 24 hour hotline to find federally qualified health centers. And the number is 800-328-3838. The test for COVID-19 is free and there's uh, community-based testing um, it, one is them at, is at PNC. In order to go, there, there is others that have been cropping up lately, um, um, uh, run by counties. Um, those, you have to be county residents. But for the PNC one uh, and the one in, uh, um, Mr. Vornlocker, where's the other site? Bergen County Community yeah. College. Right, at the Bergen County Community College. Um, for those, um, you uh, you must be experiencing um, cough, fever, shortness of breath, and by fever, 99.6. If you don't have 
that those symptoms, they're going to turn you away. Bring proof that you're a New Jersey resident. If you're under 18, you have to have a parent or guardian. If you have a medical insurance card, bring it with you, but um, you, you're not required to have that. Um, and you're going to show up. Individuals will drive through a secure area and will remain in their vehicles throughout the entire testing process. Be prepared for a long wait. No restrooms will be available. Uh, so bring any kind of comfort items that you need. Um, uh, so a curious thing about the virus that both Mr. Vornlocker and I have noticed uh, is uh, that a lot of our residents who are getting it are uh, between the ages of uh, 40 uh, and, uh, that was my wife coming in, yeah, between the ages of 40 and 59. So this may not be following the predictions that we've seen coming out of China. I've gotten a lot of questions about pets. It does not appear, There's, the CDC says there is no evidence that pets, um, that pets can get infected. They can, however, carry the virus just as any object can have the virus on them. But it does not appear that your pets can be infected. Um, crowding at the supermarkets has come up. When you go to the supermarket, you need to uh, wipe down the cart. Hopefully the supermarket will provide wipes for you. There's been complaints about uh, crowding. I have been in touch with one chain. Uh, one chain has been very responsive to me. It appears they are taking this into stride. I've hinted to them uh, that I'm not predicting, I mean, I mean, I'm not threatening, but I'm predicting that if they don't care, take care of the crowding, that the government will, and they seem to be responding. Playgrounds are closed. Um, parks are open, but uh, we have people controlling, looking for offenders who are not using social distancing or people who are um, using the playground equipment. We had to take down the hoops of the basketball courts, which unfortunately now a single person can't go out there and play it because people were going out and playing. Um, we've noticed teenagers gathering. Again, we are going to uh, enforce the social um, distancing. Um, the municipal building uh, is closed. However, there are people in there working. Uh, you can reach us by U.S. mail, phone, and email. Uh, please be patient. We're on limit on shifts or half staff at different times. So it's gonna take a while to get to us. Um, please use our restaurants. We've posted on our website a way to uh, find out which restaurants are open. Uh, this is the township website. Um, I've echoed it on uh, my pages. Um, please try to use them. We've indicated which are open, whether they're doing delivery or pickup or both. Congress has passed bills to help people and businesses, but that's kind of beyond the scope of um, the township. Um, please respect the senior shopping hours. At ShopRite, it's 7 to 8, and at Stop and Shop, it's 6 to 7.30. If you're immune compromised, you can go at those times too. Um, federal income taxes are delayed to July 15th. Uh, it's a bill that's sitting on the governor's desk for him to sign to uh, do the same. Uh, daycare centers uh, after April 1st will be open for the children of essential workers. Um, the governor has uh, ensured that your utilities will not be shut off during this. Um, and uh, to sum it up, I believe the, the township uh, is in a squared away or as squared away situation as we can be. Uh, government is operating uh, as best it can under these limited conditions or trying conditions. And um, I think I'm now going to hand it over to Freeholder Director Chanel Robinson, who has been leading us through daily um, conferences, keeping the leadership of the county informed. Uh, Freeholder Director, do you have anything to say? Nothing much more than what you've already uh, expressed. I just want to encourage everyone to stay calm, follow the guidelines and best practices from the CDC. Uh, Dr. Kramer, Mayor 
Kramer has outlined them on uh, Facebook as well as on this afternoon's call, this evening's call. The best assistance that we have, since so there is no uh, medicine for this at this time, is social distancing. And as Mayor Kramer said, Please be patient with government. And while our, biz our buildings are closed to the public, we are open for business to keep government running. However, with that being said, we are not at full capacity with our workforce. You know that um, when it comes to the concerns of the people, the human services, the recycling, the transportation, uh, communication, as well as the economic term or status or situation that we're faced with, we all are in this together. It is an uncertain time, but if we follow the guidelines that have been set before us, whether you agree or disagree with what's out there, from the rock that we sit on, it is the most effective way that we can flatten the curve and come through this on the other side um, much better off. So just encourage everyone to stay in what as much as possible, not going out, uh, only to take care of essential business that is going to the grocery store. Um, wherever possible, they're asking retail businesses or professional services to do as much online as possible with, within reason and being able to uh, provide social distancing if you had to do it a uh, face face uh, meeting to complete those transactions. Um, there are a plethora of information. They come, it's coming hard and fast. So all of these go to the links that are provided, validated links um, that are provided from the CDC and through the state. Please be aware of scammers, people exploiting uh, us in times such as this, looking to go from door to door, saying they're census workers or that they are uh, checking on. Uh, residents, if, if they have COVID or not, no one is proactively knocking door to door. Uh, so please be aware and vigilant. And if you hear of anything or know of anything, go through the proper channels to report it. Again, we're in this together and together we'll get through this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Freeholder Director. Uh, Councilman Will Galtieri has been doing a really Thank excellent you. job on um, organizing our volunteers. Uh, I talked to him early on and he just took the ball and ran with that. So would you like to talk about what you're doing, Councilman? Can I interject real quick? Let me just interject real quick, this is Michael. I just wanted to ask people to hold off on their questions until the comments uh, from the uh, speakers are done. That way we don't have to get through. And if people are making comments, if you could refrain from making comments, it'll make it much easier for your questions to be read. Go ahead, Councilman, sorry. No problem. Um, so thank you, Mr. Eric. Yes, yeah. uh, what I wanted to briefly touch on is that um, early on, there were a bunch of groups that were all trying to come up with ways to help the town. And that's that's an excellent, um, an excellent feeling to see everybody wanting to jump in. And, what we're able to do is gather everybody into one group. Um, it truly is a grassroots campaign of, of people coming together and, and donating their time to form. Um, it's residents helping residents, Franklin Township, that can be found on Facebook. And there is a website uh, um, uh, that it's at. It's uh, facebook.com slash uh, Franklin, um, And there you can find a link to the website to register to help if you're able to volunteer. We're also starting to, to open up and we've got the form going for um, uh, uh, people asking for help. And really the initial intent is try to get people to to help offset or, or help at risk, uh, the at risk community of um, if you're able to order groceries from uh, the supermarkets but not able to, uh, you really shouldn't be in the store. Um, then uh, work with uh, that's a way to reach out to the group to set up um, for somebody to go and pick up. We're also starting to work with the food bank to um, uh, try to do deliveries rather than having people all coming on to the, coming to the food bank and and putting the employees there that are working tirelessly to try to help the community um, at risk also. So that's that's residents helping residents. And again, um, thank you to uh, Rich Seaman, Michelle Peterson, uh, Diane Dudas, um, Jonathan White, and there's others that I'm sure.
sure I'm missing and it's not on purpose. It's just a lot of people stepped up in a short amount of time. So really thank you to that group. Uh, the other initiative that has, that's been announced today and, and has been and has been over the past couple of days is the food bank really needs some assistance. So a virtual food drive is uh, has started. Um, thank you to the residents that have already stepped up and contributed in the emergency fund and now even in the virtual food drive. Uh, what this helps is allows the food bank to raise funds to go out and buy food, um, which there's a lot of people that we expect will need some help in the coming weeks. So um, if you if you have the means um, and are able to, to give $5 or $10, um, any help is appreciated, appreciated. And then starting Monday, we'll be starting actual collections um, for the food bank. Rather than having them dropped off at the food bank itself, again, to protect the employees, we're setting it up from 9 to 4, uh, Monday through Friday, at the Senior Center at 505 DeMott Lane. Uh, that will be, uh, there will be a bin outside to drop off food, uh, non-perishable items, and then uh, a Franklin Township employee will take them into the building and we'll get them over to the food bank. And um, But really, we're, we're promoting the virtual food drive, but if you have anything to spare also, uh, the big request is for peanut butter right now. Uh, that's another way to try to help help out. But uh, the volunteerism, um, we're we're going to try to expand as much as we can. Um, but right now, we want to start small, uh, just to see where we're at. Um, and and so far, the the outpouring of support has been amazing. I think we have over 60 volunteers to date, and and I think that number is increasing daily. So uh, if you if you're feeling okay. Um, the goal is not to have contact, it's contactless um, uh, volunteers. Okay, thank you, Will. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, questions are rolling by, they're, they're, they're not going to get answered because um, we're not looking at that and they're going to scroll off the screen and we're not going to be able to get back to them. So please follow the, the guidance. Um, mm -hmm. Malik of tapped into uh, asked a number of questions and I'm going to go to them because he um, gathered questions from his readers. Um, so he said, you mentioned last week that we want to shut things down for two weeks. However, I've not seen the, the state government provide any timeline metrics to help the public get a better understanding of expectations. Do I know why? Well, um, I don't have a direct ear to the governor today uh, he, we learned that he said um, the schools will stay closed at least till April 17th um, and um, that that's not a hard uh, date as in that could be rolled back uh, further. So we know that uh, things are still going to go on or expected to go on at least to April 17th and probably will go on uh, further. This is a fluid situation and it's, um, it's going to be changing all the time. We don't know what exactly is going to happen, so, uh, but the best we know is the governor is expecting to stay till April 17th. Uh, what is the town doing to encourage residents to follow the shelter-in-place laws? I think Lieutenant Rizzo would be best to answer that. Uh, we are actually, again, we're, we're patrolling the parks, uh, doing extra security checks, um, and, and just, just being out there and trying to, to keep our, our, our controls vigilant, uh, while maintaining social distancing and trying to limit exposure to our officers. Um, I, I have to say that overall, we, we've seen a, a decrease with, uh, people being out, but, uh, we can never tell you enough. Don't gather in groups. If you're going to go to the parks, make sure you're staying with your social, social distancing. Uh, the fields are closed. Don't, don't play soccer. Uh, we actually just had to break a soccer game up this afternoon. So, um, again, just to get that message out of, of keep the, the organized sports away. Okay. Thank you. Um, number three, in your opinion, as a medical professional, is it safe to buy, take out food, deliver food? Why or why not? Why not? 
Uh, so food itself is safe, uh, especially hot food. Um, so that is safe. The problem is the packaging of the food. And uh, there's actually, I found, actually my sister-in-law found an excellent video uh, of, uh, from a physician uh, who shows you exactly how to unplate or how to uh, plate food from a uh, takeout, as well as how to deal with your groceries. So uh, I posted that both on the uh, mayorkramer.com. Actually, my wife put it there and I put it up on uh, Facebook. Um, it's, I think it's the top uh, posting right now. Uh, and it'll show you uh, how to do that uh, as safely as possible. We all have to eat. Um, do you think we should uh, limit how many people go to the supermarket at the same time? Well, I, I did, um, I did uh, talk about that already, that the supermarkets are uh, beginning to fall in line. Uh, if they're not, if you think there's not social distancing on there, you should call the police. You can let me know, but I'm just going to call the police. Um, uh, let's see. Do you have numbers of how many people in our township have been laid off? Uh, I, he knows that Councilman uh, Rahm has an independent site helping with job listings, but is there more that can be done? Uh, maybe Assemblyman Danielson can try to host a virtual job fair. So uh, I spoke with Assemblyman Danielson about that. He is working on uh, just that. Uh, uh, Dr. Ambassarian is posting about jobs. You can go to covid19.nj.gov, covid19.nj.gov, and you can, um, there are job listings uh, there. And also if you're an employer, you can list that you have uh, job openings. Uh, as far as how many are unemployed in town, we we never do just statistics at that. That's done at the national level and perhaps at the state level. Um, how is the township helping our seniors? We just heard from uh, Councilman Galtieri about that. Um, what are the crime stats for this month? Uh, what is up? What is down? Uh, Lieutenant Rizzo. So uh, our call volume in, in general, our, our call for service volume is actually uh, down a great deal. A lot of that has to do with the fact that many, many people are following the stay at home order. Uh, motor vehicle crashes are down, uh, burglaries are down, our, our call for service are up, but the call for service being up is, is indicative of our officers being proactive and calling out park checks and mall checks and uh, the, the checks that we've created for the executive orders. But overall, our call volume has, has dropped tremendously. And that's, and that's uh, really 100% because a good portion of the people are following the stay home order and, and taking this seriously. Okay, thank you. Um, the last question is, um, if someone doesn't have a primary care physician and they have COVID-19, um, what should they do? Um, well, the, there, if you go to the website um, and the Facebook page, there uh, is a post that we just put up. It's up near the top. You'll get a PDF on uh, what to do uh, if you have COVID-19, but basically uh, you need to, uh, uh, call, if you don't have a doctor, you could call Zoofall. Um, uh, I'm trying to get that number again. One second. And um, it's, I'm not finding it easily. Um, it is on the website, but you should call uh, Zoofall uh, and they can uh, help direct you. The number is 973-328- Three three four four. Basically, if you're mild, you're just going to be told to stay home, and if you're severe, then you're going to be asked to come come into the hospital. Um, those are the the main uh, two choices that are going to happen. 
um, and Zufall can help you with that. And you can also go to covid19.nj.com and take that, um, that test that they give you. It's up near the top. Are you feeling unwell? And that will uh, help direct you to what you should do. Um, I think that's it for the questions that I was asked. I did notice one question go by, why aren't we telling you about clusters? I, so I have not been notified of any clusters. Um, it is not the uh, place for the mayor to know about the locations of any for single individuals. Uh, I think the health officer would notify me if we had a cluster, but so I'm not aware of any clusters, but I, I've emphasized it on my page. I emphasized it here before. You need to assume that everyone you come in contact with is infected and that you are infected and you uh, and asymptomatic and then you might infect the person you come in contact with. So it doesn't matter if the house next door to you is infected, you need to act as if they're infected. Whatever choice you would make to, to do if those people next door to you were infected, you should do that choice. Because even if they don't have signs, even if they're not, um, don't have and test positive, they very well could be positive. That's the insidious thing about this virus. So, um, okay, if we can now get some uh, questions, um, uh, I'm ready to answer them. Uh, we can start with Mr. Bowman. Do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, Mr. Lyons, do you have Sorry, any questions? Sorry, I had it on mute. Okay. <laughs> I had it on mute. No, I don't have any questions. Sorry. Okay, Mr. L Mr. Lyons. No, you uh, answered the main question. Except for that uh, last question that I had, I'm not sure if you wanted to discuss that. Um, I, maybe it would be something that would be done at the next council meeting. Oh, right, right. You're right. I, I didn't. Um, it was on the next page down. Uh, how are we with the quarantine uh, and isolation ordinance? It, we're, the next council meeting, um, we will be voting on it. I hate to predict votes, but I got a good feeling that this one's going to be passed. It was something that the health officer has requested. And uh, I see, if I read the tea leaves correctly, uh, it looks like it'll be a unanimous vote, but I hate to predict uh, politics. Um, okay. Um, are Mr. Steinbrook, do you have any questions from the audience? No, I don't see too many here, but if people want to enter them now, and if other people did not comment, so there's a lot of comments, and we just want to kind of keep it to the questions so we can locate them. So one was uh, a simple one that people can answer is, is it safe to go to the grocery store? So anytime you leave your house, there is risk. Um, but obviously you need to eat. Uh, some of the grocery stores are doing uh, shop from home where they will do the picking of the groceries for you. And, uh, when, and then they will, uh, you can drive there, shop right, put out a, a uh, message that when you arrive there, there will be a way that you can text them and they will then bring out the groceries to you. Uh, and then you can look at that video to see how to uh, deal with the groceries once you have them home. Uh, but anytime you go out, there's a risk. But if you go to the grocery store, six foot spacing, um, hand washing when you get back, uh, et cetera. Uh, I, I went to the grocery store just the other day just to see how it's um, how it was. And a gentleman came up to shake my hand and I had to tell him, no, I can't do that. So six foot spacing. Next. Um, so real quick, I just wanted to say, uh, Jeff Eleven Sullivan is, is commenting for us to keep a summary. If everyone else, again, could refrain, only ask questions. So one question was regarding construction projects, somebody's uh, building a house, and we'll start working on the new routes. So in terms of inspections and things like that. Mr. Vornlocker. Thank you, Mr. 
Mr. Mayor. So in reference to uh, construction, the construction office is open for inspections. Um, the, uh, the executive order did not stop ongoing construction projects. Uh, if you have a project that involves a home that is unoccupied, the inspections can be scheduled via the normal means by calling into the construction office and scheduling an inspection. At this time, we are not inspecting work being done on, in occupied homes. Uh, the uh, Department of Community Affairs at the state of New Jersey has granted extensions for all work that is done uh, that would require an inspection in a certain amount of time in, in, in occupied homes. So while we're continuing on unoccupied structures, we, we will not be inspecting occupied structures. And one question uh, for Lieutenant Rizzo, I assume, would be, is the Franklin Township Police Department uh, issuing uh, a ticketing, moving violations, that kind of thing? As far as uh, uh, enforcing the laws, yes, we will enforce, uh, continue to enforce the laws as we would um, for, for observed violations. Uh, obviously, we're, we're trying to limit the contact with with uh, the public as much as possible to uh, put our officers at risk or, or the public at risk for that matter. So um, obviously for, for more minor violations, we, we may be apt to uh, give a warning or, or just a, an on-the-spot type of uh, admonishment there as opposed to uh, other penalties. But, but yes, uh, all, all laws are, are being enforced. Sounds like a good idea. Um, the other question was, uh, can lawn services keep working? Yes. They have to, they have to between That's themselves. Easy, yeah. to, yes, they have to between themselves keep social distancing. Don't go out to tip them or greet them. Um, keep your distance, but yes. Okay. If uh, hopefully... Uh, Superintendent Ravalli is, is on. There's a question. Uh, someone was curious about supplies that are in the schools and whether or not those were collected or donated or if there was any resources that the schools were offering to healthcare professionals. And thanks, Mr. Steinberg. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. And yes, the answer is we are doing that. I actually just sent a truckload of stuff over today that was surplus science gloves, um, some some desanitizing wipes and some other things, and we'll continue to take inventory as supplies come in, and what we don't need, we will certainly send over. Okay. And uh, I assume for uh, Mr. Gornlocker, uh, are there uh, new deadlines for property tax assessment appeal? So I saw that question as well. I was going to bring it up when I uh, saw the break. So the, the answer is um, we don't know. That's a decision that would be made by the state government. And if uh, freeholder director Robinson is still on the line, that might be a good question to ask in your daily uh, phone conference with the governor's office. Do we know? Okay. And earlier uh, in the thread, I did see a question which was answered by some folks in the thread, but basically, people wondering if they could uh, donate to the food bank and where they might do that. So that's an easy one at franklinfoodbank.org. So you can Google Franklin Food Bank or just go to franklinfoodbank.org. And I know that they have uh, increased volume and they're uh, working without volunteers, so they would appreciate any help you can you can provide. Maybe does anybody on the uh, any of the speakers have any uh, thoughts about other ways that people could make donations? Um, locally? Um, so, so uh, this is Councilman Gatsari. Today we sent out a, a, a request. Um, so I am not trying to single out uh, the food bank as the only organization in town that I know that there's others. So I have, uh, the, uh, we have sent out a, a um, town-wide message that if there's an organization doing stuff, please reach out to me and we'll get information out there as, as quickly as we can also and continue to update the list. Um, but again, I would encourage, um, like you said, going to franklinfoodbank.org to do the um, virtual food drive, uh, which will help them buy groceries for, for families. Um, and they're able to uh, provide food of all, to all different types of diets as well. The, the other option, as I, as I mentioned, is as of Monday, uh, we will start collecting non-perishable items for them at 
Mr. Steingill. Oh, sorry, I was off of you. Can somebody address uh, the animal shelter operation and where they're at right now? Mr. Vornlocker? Sure, uh, I can do that. Uh, oh. as, as most of you or some of you may or may not know, uh, the animal shelter does fall under the, the police department and it is under um, my division. Uh, they, they are currently close to the public, but under under uh, reduced staff and, and they are operating. They are in every day. I can assure you that the animals are uh, well taken care of. And we've we've uh, limited our uh, volunteers uh, through Second Chance and Angel Tales, the two nonprofit organizations that assist the shelter in their operations. Uh, we, we've limited contact uh, with those individuals by doing uh, volunteering on a signed up basis only. Uh, this way we can uh, ensure that the animals are cared for, uh, but we don't have uh, too many people and we're able to maintain uh, social distancing and, and uh, still maintain the animals. Uh, they are accepting donations still. Um, the donation box is out in front of the shelter, um, so any donations could be dropped there. Okay. One, one uh, actually, one before you go on, I was just reminded, um, yep. I didn't do a shout out to Jonathan White. The original idea um, that led to uh, residents helping residents was Jonathan White's idea. <laughs> and, and then I asked uh, Will and, uh, and Rich and uh, Michelle was already doing it and it just took off. Michelle actually was a day ahead of us, but I, I, he deserves that shout out. Okay. Go ahead, Michael. Okay, great. Uh, so the question was just with, with, again with regard to ticketing, but uh, you know, with regard to social distancing guidelines and, and enforcement of that, how is the uh, police force handling it? Oh, we are obviously going to follow the direction of uh, the county prosecutor and uh, any direction that they would provide uh, from the attorney general's office. Uh, at this point, we, we we do have the ability to summons. Luckily, we have not had to do that. Uh, anyone that we've, we've encountered has been very cooperative and understanding. Um, and, and we're trying to deal with this more on a community policing level. But if, if it did get to that level where we did have to issue a summons, uh, we, we are prepared and, and could do that. Okay. And uh, a question. Um, there's really two questions for you, Mr. Mayor. One, uh, with the concern regarding xenophobia and any kind of uh, backlash against uh, Asian Americans, uh, given that some are using language that may kind of create a kind of toxic environment around that issue. Uh, I, I think that's horrible. It's ridiculous. And right now, we have more cases than China, so we are we are the people to be worried about. Uh, Florida um, is thinking of banning New Yorkers from coming or making them quarantine for uh, two weeks. Um, if it's, if this started in China and it does seem that it did, uh, no person you're meeting had anything to do with it. That, that's just that's just raw bigotry. Or any person, period. So the other, the other question, uh, as Ms. Ray, as you've seen online before, and it, uh, I think it's hard to address, was the question of the number of cases that are uh, identified in Franklin as compared to neighboring municipalities. Um, so if you want to address that. I mean, why are we higher than the neighboring ones? Well, um, the main reason. The main reason is that uh, we're one sixth of the county, um, so we're going to have bigger numbers. Um, that we have more density than other parts of the county and parts of our town too. Uh, if you put up a map um, of New Jersey and it had these purple circles on it, and what you notice is the closer you are to New York City the more likely you are to have a bigger circle. There's a circle for each county. 
uh, but also you'll notice that the denser counties or the more populated counties had bigger circles. Um, so uh, we don't know of a Franklin issue other than we are big and there are dense areas. Um, that's the only thing reason I can think of it. Okay, um, and there was uh, also a question, uh, aside from donations uh, of uh, financial donations to charities, uh, any donations of supplies to either the animal shelter or other groups. I think there was some mention earlier um, about peanut butter and residents to residents, but all of that. Will or somebody wants to, uh, or councilman, Terry wants to answer that. I'm sorry, what was your question? Just a question about um, actual actual goods being donated or supplies being donated, and then uh, to the animal shelter or to other uh, charitable organizations. Yep. Yeah, again, so um, so animal shelter, I know, is uh, there. As was mentioned, the drop off box in front of the, the facility. As far as goods or food for the food bank, um, we've we've organized that at the. The drop off will be at uh, the, the municipal complex, and then it, as I hear from other organizations, then we'll start figuring out other uh, setup points. It might be as simple as just having uh, tables set up in the senior center, since we've got a large room uh, that's, that's empty right now. That we organize one for the food bank and one for other but, um, Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And there's a, there's a question, uh, con, you know, concerns about the welfare of our neighbors who are living in nursing homes, uh, assisted living uh, facilities. Um, is there any information we have with regard to their welfare? So, and so I, there's two, one, there's another question that I'd also like to ask, Michael, this is Bob Warnlocker, but I, I mean, I can touch on this. Yep, the, the nursing homes and assisted living uh, facilities all fall under the licensure of the Department of Health. They, we have contacted all of them through the emergency management office to ensure that they are uh, doing what they need to do and that, that they have the guidance from the, the Department of Health, both locally at the county level and, and at the state level. So that we, we don't have any, any direct control over the nursing homes or assisted living facilities but we certainly have reached out to them to make sure that they're aware that they can contact us if they're in need, but also to make sure that they are uh, understanding of all of the guidelines coming out of the State Department of Health. Um, the, the other question I'd like to ask, uh, to answer though, and I think it would be Councilman Galtieri, is Marie Fiorello, before you tune out, the answer to your question about groceries being delivered from markets to your 85-year-old mother, I think Councilman Galtieri can answer that question. Yeah, thank you. I was going to jump in with that one also. So that is, um, and Jonathan's been posting also, I see at the same time, that is the whole reason we started residents helping residents. Um, the, um, the just fill out the group of, I need help. Um, don't just go order groceries for your, uh, for your mother or relative or, or whoever may be uh, without reaching out to the group first. But the goal is that it, if you have a means to order groceries for them for uh, the shop at home, but there we, we acknowledge there's limited deliveries at the stores, and it, it's just um, simple manpower at the stores to handle it. So that is the goal. They are accepting, from what I understand, they're still allowing um, uh, orders to be picked up. So this would be the perfect opportunity to, to go to the, the Facebook group, go to the website, um, fill out a form, I need help. The group will reach out to you and organize, and, and we'll start working on a way to work out one. Uh, one of the things I want to mention, though, is we started this approach so that the, the transaction is solely with the store, um, and that was under some advice from, from both the chief of police and some other uh, agencies. There are groups that we know of that have started in other areas where people do the, the shopping. Um, we're trying to avoid that right now it, as much as just so that um, really the transaction is between the store and the, cus the customer or the resident. And then it's just somebody picking up food and, and safely delivering it to the front door um, without really making contact. Um, or if you have a garage, you can open the garage door and they can drop it in the garage and then close the door as they leave and, and, um, and, and figure it out. It's whatever your comfort level is. But really, this is designed to be contactless delivery. But um, please take advantage of it. Uh, please, please reach out to the group, uh, to this group that's been started. This is the whole reason that it was started to make sure that we account for residents that 
change it. And so, uh, thank you. And so, uh, Superintendent Ravalli, um, there's some questions about uh, how things are going with the remote instruction of students, also about student access to laptops, uh, student internet access. I know there are internet providers that have offered that for free, so I'm wondering if that's been tracked. Um, and then I have a, I'll have a follow-up just advice for parents, because I know parents have had some questions about just things that they can do, you know, with their students, uh, with their ch children uh, while they're home. Sure. Let me first say that, if I may, uh, all of our information is on our district website if you're able to access it. And it will talk about our remote learning plan, which is built in the first 12-day cycle. Remember, we've only um, focused on the first 12 days. We're building the second 12 as we speak, and more information will come out about that next week. Um, but for the first 12-day cycle, that was really learning packs, and there is um, access to those learning packs online, but all of our students, uh, for the most part, were sent home with the learning pack paper copies our last day of school, March 13th. In preparation for cycle two, we have um, rolled out and we had additional opportunities for, you know, we've been dealing with our learning community via our blast messaging and through our principals, and we had opportunities for picking up laptops for students and uh, families that were without devices. And since um, beginning that process, after we had closed school doors and up and through what will end on Friday, we'll have put out almost probably close to another thousand devices in student hands. So um, we've been constantly surveying and, and have a pretty good handle on those that have internet access, those that needed devices, and again, we're able to get devices in people's hands. If you're still having a problem with access, uh, you certainly do, do want to contact your building principal, um, and you can do that by calling your school, leaving a message. Our principals and our staff, although they may not be physically in the building, they're working every day, and uh, they are, in fact, checking messages, and they'll reach back out to you. Uh, when distributing the laptops, and we have a whole section on our on our website as well that speaks to connectivity, speaks to um, uh, instruction technology resources, speaks to all kinds of additional activities you can do with your kids via technology. If you look on our website, there's an instructional uh, technology resource section on the remote learning plan information portion of the site uh, with a plethora of information regarding additional kinds of learning activities for kids. So um, we feel pretty confident that it's going pretty well. We're checking in with our teachers. Uh, we're working, you know, we have about 35, 40 different uh, principals, such a principal supervisors that are working directly with our teachers. And uh, all reports are that, um, you know, it seems to be going pretty well. And our teachers, as always, have stepped up to the plate and are doing some really wonderful things. Um, being very creative. So uh, we're looking forward to, if we have to, um, our second 12-day cycle, which would begin after spring break. And we're thinking that may even include some more exciting um, technological kinds of things with, uh, uh, with, with backup, if technology access is impossible, uh, that will start to push learning even a little bit further. So that's where we're at. And what was the follow-up, Mike? Uh, I think it was just whether or not there's a resource or place we can direct people for parents who are just kind of looking for ideas uh, for things at home beyond the what's happening with the online yeah. curriculum. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the best way is to, like I said, um, if you click open to our website, if obviously if you're looking for technological resources, you'll have a website access. If you go to our website, you click the remote learning plan information tab. When you get the remote learning plan site, you're going to see um, all kinds of different things that you can do, all kinds of different information that's there. And uh, more importantly, there is a uh, plethora of additional technological resources. Um, there's, a, there's a link for that. When you click that open, it'll give you all kinds of things that you can do. Um, it's unlimited. So I ready, linkage stuff. Um, you know, clever symbolic stuff, all kinds of opportunities. And then there's also 
the information about the Comcast, uh, my understanding is through my instructional tech, through our instructional technology folks in the Office of Instructional Technology, Comcast has an opportunity where they're offering two, three months, and then a very low subscription for what my folks are telling me is pretty good bandwidth uh, after the two month period. So it's something you may be interested in looking at, and that's called the Comcast Essentials Package. And uh, we even we put that online too because uh, you know it is free for 60 days, which would likely carry you through any point of closure that we might have. Yep. Dr. Evans, if you could just repeat the uh, website for people. Sure. It's, yep. You go to our main page, which is you know FranklinBoE.org, www.FranklinBoE.org. When you get to our main page, you can't miss it. It's the first link there, and it says Remote Learning uh, Remote Learning Plan. And you click on that Remote Learning Plan, and it'll take you to our um, main site that has all of the information on it about the Remote Learning Plan. It has the modules there. In case you lost something, you can reprint it. Um, it has additional resources. Uh, uh, it's both Spanish and English talks about our free mail delivery plan, um, our, our, our the sites where we're offering meals on Mondays and Thursdays, uh, frequently asked questions are there, um, and our student accountability rubric is there, which will change during the second 12 days, but uh, for the first 12 days it's there. And then again, the additional technology resources are there as well. So, so www.franklinboe.org. So there's... Uh, and uh, real quick, Mr. Go ahead. So there was a question I saw if someone sees someone on the closed county golf courses, what do you do? You call the police. Um, there was another question uh, about where are the infections coming from? Well, the first infection was a gentleman who had traveled to uh, Italy um, and he came back and um, managed to get through the screening, probably appropriately, but then became sick uh, afterwards. I do not think he's patient zero for here. I think uh, New York City is a place where people congregate. There are uh, a lot of foreign travel there, people from all over the coast uh, coming there. And then those people, or people from here work there. Um, but where these cases are coming from now, they're coming from here. It's here. It is community acquired now. Um, we are not able to trace where people got uh, get things. So it is here, it is amongst us. Uh, that's the sad news, but that's where they're coming from. Again, assume everyone you encounter is infected. Go ahead, Michael. Okay, um, real quick, our friend Bob Laporte had a question about donation of blood and the need for uh, blood donation. If we have that information, if not, we can get back to people. Uh, what was the question? Is uh, so this is Lieutenant Rizzo. They actually talked about that today in our daily conference call with the uh, OEM coordinators. And what you should generally do is contact uh, the. I know. I know in the Somerset section what they were saying, or the, the Somerset uh, Blood Council, what they were doing was having you call in to make an appointment, and they are accepting donations, but they're. Uh, making sure that you have appointment times and, and they're only allowing uh, one or two people in at, the, at, at any given time and they're requiring you to wear masks. Uh, they're screening you for fever and so on before you come in. So uh, just just contact um, the, the, the local hospitals to see if they need it. And I just want to add to that, so according, to the C, according to the CDC, this is not a bloodborne disease. Um, the blood supply is safe. There's uh, no known transmission through a blood transfusion. Go ahead. Um, so if we, uh, obviously we can't speculate, but if anybody has any direct information about how our local hospitals are faring. I don't have that information. Okay. And then you may not have this either. Um, but was a question about if a child uh, become, you know, with COVID-19 re requires hospitalization, um, then visitation from family is would not be 
possible, or do we not have that information? I, I do. You know, that's oh, up to the Kramer, hospital. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Mayor. Um, Go ahead. I can speak to that a little bit. And, and I'm an employee of St. Peter's Hospital. I am not a spokesperson for St. Peter's, but I can just tell you um, what's happening there in a general sense. And then also, uh, Robert Wood Johnson Somerset, which is uh, formerly known as Somerset Medical Center. So just like everybody else, even the test site, PPE, which is personal protective equipment, um, is what everybody is searching for. The emergency rooms in the beginning and hospitals uh, during the first week uh, were busting at the scene. Um, you have your frontline staff who are working very hard to make sure that the patients are taken care of. Um, but if this continues the way it's trending and we don't flatten the curve, um, not to alarm anybody, but the protective uh, equipment uh, will be crucial and critical in the care of those patients who are moderate to severe, who require hospitalization. Um, I would just uh, just encourage everyone, just like with anything else, because the regular flu, um, unless you're dire or or severe in your symptoms, most people stay home and they they press through it, and then they go to emergency room when it's necessary or needed. This is no different. Um, people are running to go to the, the different testing sites because they just want to know uh, if they have COVID, if they test positive for COVID-19 or not. Um, however, this is why social distancing and staying uh, uh, shelter in place is very critical in flattening that curve and slowing this down. So, Freeholder so, Director Robin said if I could follow, have to follow up if you have any information uh, countywide or in Franklin and maybe uh, Mr. Bornlock could help or, or Lieutenant Rizzo in terms of personal protective equipment for um, local first responders of any kind and any uh, supply issues there. Uh, I'm going to defer to Rizzo and, or even Bornlock to respond on behalf of uh, they've been in more constant contact with OEM, and we're the municipal OEM is working with county OEM. So, okay. Uh, so I, I can actually take that. Uh, as some of you know, uh, I am also a deputy coordinator of emergency management for the town. Uh, we have been in constant contact, daily contact with county OEM and and the state. Uh, my office has uh, procured. Uh, some some per personal uh, you know the PPEs and right now we we have stock um, but as the freeholder director stated if uh, this were to to reach a, a critical point those those supplies would be severely uh, limited and and would would burn we would burn through them relatively quickly so um, we are working with county OEM and and county OEM has has done some procurement and it's just an ongoing process where we we continue to procure a resource that everyone is trying to get but right now we, we are in in pretty good shape okay great and there's a quest uh request mr mayor maybe to kind of up your volume a little bit uh, and uh then there was a quote uh, the question about support for uh resources for small supporting small businesses so mr mayor i, I can take that so i i did see the question actually i was going to ask you to bring it up michael so uh, the yep. question about support for small businesses and jeda programs dca programs and the like there is on our website resources for local businesses affected by covid 19 it's in the spotlight on the main page of the township website it brings you to links uh, specifically related to the response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, by the U.S. Small Business Administration, uh, the uh, state of New Jersey, New Jersey EDA, um, and then also interim guidance for business and employers from the CDC, assistance from the Somerset County Business Partnership, and the New Jersey Department of Labor. So all of those links are uh, in the spotlight on the title, Resources for Local Businesses. Okay, great. 
And I'm down at the end of the thread. Uh, I can't promise I didn't miss some questions along the way. I did see a couple of things I think we addressed a little bit, but just referencing what our local grocery uh, stores and supermarkets are currently able to do in terms of delivery, delivery, curbside tech, you know, anybody uh, has an update on kind of where things are with that? Uh, I only know because my wife looked at that and um, for ourselves and uh, it was, she noticed it was several days out and they were only booking for X amount of time, which was several days out and you couldn't book beyond that. So she's waiting till tomorrow uh, to book. Um, uh, we have no direct control of that. Will, uh, can you help with that in any way? Is, is your organization able to help with that? I'm sorry, I missed the part of it. So as they were asking about um, ordering from home and then picking up, and the order from home is booked out uh, a fair distance. Um, are you able to help? With that at all? Are you set up to do that? So, um, so we can follow up with the stores to see what their needs are. I, I know early on we had discussed uh, other options if there's something that the stores would um, are comfortable with. So it all comes down to if the stores can handle or not. Uh, but it's something I can um, definitely follow to follow up on and see what we can do and and how we can assist with that. So um, if somebody does have the need again, they can they can go to the group or or go to the, the website that's been posted a couple times um, and fill out a form. I need uh, I need help um, just so we identify who who it is, and then uh, we'll start seeing what the stores can do. Um, we're we're really trying to avoid uh, the going shopping, being a personal shopper for somebody just because of the risk all around, but. Um, if that's something we need to explore that hasn't been taken off the, the table as a possibility as well. So um, I will definitely follow up on that. Okay, and I can get you the contacts that I, if I sure. haven't already for the uh, people at the supermarkets, the managers. Yep. Um, and if anybody else there has a question, again, that got skipped, um, as I'm kind of scrolling through and trying to keep up, if you want to repeat it, uh, but at, at present, I think we've covered it. Maybe if there are any questions that any of the presenters um, still have in their pocket that what they wanted to address, uh, now would be a good time. Well, my wife did remind, wants me to remind people that um, we're going to do our best to download this to YouTube, and we are going to um, put it up uh, in as many places as we can. And then uh, I plan to do this again next week. Uh, stay tuned for where. I've noticed a few people um, having difficulty with the technology. Uh, we're going to look into Zoom instead, uh, but that has its limitations too. Um, so uh, the internet's being stressed as well. Yeah, I think I think those are those are household issues in terms of broadband or area issues, but it seems like uh, everything's working fine with regard. But we certainly can try Zoom. There is a, a couple questions about our favorite topic, which is toilet paper in any way uh, to get alerted to the availability of it. Obviously, people throw that up in groups on Facebook quite a bit. By the time you get it, it's all gone. So any ideas uh, on that? Yeah, stop hoarding toilet paper. Uh, I, I don't. Amen. I, I don't. I don't get it. Um, uh, Mr. Vornlocker actually had the theory that that all started in Australia, who got their paper from China, and you know the internet being what it is and social media that it leaked over to here. I I don't understand it. Relatively few people get diarrhea with the virus. Uh, yeah, we don't want to run out of toilet paper. I'm going to be a little bit gross here, but if you run out of toilet paper, you want to conserve toilet paper, take a shower. Um, uh, stop hoarding toilet paper. 
please. I'm sure the stores are looking for it. They've got some off brand names there. I just wanted to give a, a shout out to Jessica uh, Levin Sullivan. Um, she's doing an excellent job of uh, summing up. Um, uh, I appreciate that very much. And hello, Michelle. Thank you for the work you're doing. And I appreciate it even more because it saved me the trouble. So thank you. So, um, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to say, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Mayor, thank uh, you. This, this is definitely a good time to uh, to fill out the census if you haven't already, since everybody's home. Uh, I, I was able to do mine in just a few minutes, so uh, take this opportunity while you're home to just uh, fill that out to ensure that we get the resources needed um, in the coming years. Freeholder Direct, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Freeholder free Director, Mr. Mayor, I think we could do a quick closing round. Sure, that's a good idea. Brief comments. Let's start with the Freeholder okay, Director. So I heard. Um, yes, Ms. Mayor, I just wanted to applaud and commend you and uh, the team that you're working with. I'm not going to name everybody by name, um, but I just want the residents of Franklin to know that um, your leaders, your community leaders, and your elected officials have been on a and actually uh, working bipartisan to bring some of these things to light, uh, to making sure that Franklin Township uh, is safe and well. So um, we have a jewel um, in Somerset County, and I can tell you in comparison to the other county, Somerset County is doing pretty well. And I want to thank, thank you. you Mr. Mayor. I want to thank you for that, Freeholder Pre Director. You've shown great leadership um, throughout this. Um, let's see, who are Councilman Galtieri? Everybody, please be patient. I know this is trying time, so if you're able to, to volunteer, please sign up. If you need help, um, we're trying. Uh, I, I don't. I'm not. I can't promise anything. What I can, what I can say is, send in some information. Our volunteers have been doing amazing things over the past week alone to try to get the resources available. And if you, uh, I, again, I know uh, things are really tight financially for a lot of people, but if you have the means, please try to consider donating to our um, our lifeline, our community organizations that are the lifeline for those that uh, that might be struggling in the week to come. But uh, um, thank you everybody that stepped up so far, and, and please, if I, I don't mean to single out any organization, so if there's, if there's somebody out there providing help, please send it over. Um, we will try to get you posted and see what we can do to support you as well. So, uh, and thank you everybody for joining tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Superintendent Ravalli. Yes, thanks, Mayor. Thanks for the invite. Um, I just want to let everybody know there's lots of information on us, on our plan, as I said before, on our website. So please access the website. And if all else fails and you can't find the information you're looking for, if you call your child's school, um, someone from that school will like most likely be your principal, but somebody will call you back with the information that you're looking for to answer your question. So again, www.franklinboe.org, and if all else fails, call your child's school, and your principal will make sure you get a return call back. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. And I, I called him late in the in the making of this, and he, uh, as he always does. Uh, bent over backwards to make himself available. So I wanted to thank him for that. And I'll do better next time for you, John. Um, Manager Vornlocker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I, I think everyone has covered all of the things that, that our community is doing. So what I'd like to do is thank the staff of Franklin Township who work for me. They are doing a fantastic job in times of, of really great anxiety among all of us. All of our offices continue to be staffed, our police department, our public works department. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're somewhat short staffed uh, in each department daily so that we can protect the employees and, and try to minimize their risk. But we continue to staff government, uh, maybe a little slower than normal, but we're still there every day. And we're still providing the services from the IT department, maintaining the website to, like I said, public works and clerk's office and fire prevention and all of the other offices they're doing a fantastic um 
I, uh, I always hate to compliment Mr. Bornlocker in public, but um, and that's actually not true. Um, he is he is doing incredible work. He's getting in at six. He's handling calls till he falls asleep on the couch. Um, he's um, doing an incredible job, and I want him to get more sleep so he stays well because we need him. Thank you, Mr. Bornlocker. Um, Lieutenant Rizzo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the men and women of the police department because they are working tirelessly around the clock uh, to make sure that our community remains safe during these trying times. Uh, our communications officers, uh, again, the, the telecommunicators they, that answer your 911 calls, we, we staff that room 24-7, 365. And, and they too are first responders, unsung heroes that uh, we, we never hear about. Um, and I'd also like to thank the people of Franklin because they have been cooperative with us and they're, they're assisting us in keeping the community safe. And uh, I know these are difficult times and I just ask that your continued patience and cooperation with our officers um, during these trying times and I've, I've been here in the township now for almost 24 years, and I'm, I'm fortunate to say that um, this is a, a great community, and we always come together during the difficult times, and I, and I don't anticipate that this is going to be any different. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, Bill Bowman. Well, I have nothing to add. Thanks very much for your time. Okay, Mr. Lyons. Uh, thanks, Mayor Kramer. All I wanted to do is just uh, let any small business know that um, Tap Into as a whole will be allowing um, advertisers to advertise for free to get any message out for your business, and that goes for um, local organizations like any not-for-profits or anything like that. We want to help um you to spread your message of what you're trying to do right now in these very difficult times thank you mayor Freeman. thank you michael and well what i wanted to say uh just thank you to both bill bowman and uh, malik Lance for helping us get the word out about this uh event and also to just remind people that uh if they could try and bring people to the mayor's facebook page in an effort to get them direct and uncluttered uh, accurate information on COVID-19 and related matters. You know, there's a lot of uh, disinformation happening. The, you know, the governor has, you know, kind of passed on information uh, that, that we're seeing federally. And, you know, when I look at the feeds, there's a lot of different things that are confusing people. And as we go forward, you know, we're going to need people to really kind of step up and, and, and keep the accurate information in front of people's eyes, um, you know, as we get through some trying times. So okay. that's pretty much it. Uh, Thank you. I did, did see a question. Wanna... I did uh, one second. Yeah. I did see a question from Ben Guy about small businesses. So you could go to COVID19.nj.gov, uh, and they've got it. But you can also go to CV as in coronavirus uh, dot business dot nj dot gov cv dot business dot nj dot gov and they've got a lot of small business information uh there go ahead michael i was just going to say we haven't uh really officially launched it but we did uh create a a group that we anticipate we may need to need for which is franklin direct so that's one word franklin direct is a group that we'll be able to, we're, trying, we're going to be trying to bring people to. And uh, one of the benefits of that, um, should we need it, is that people can get uh, all posts in front of them. And uh, we also have some other ideas, but that's uh, just at Franklin Direct on Facebook. All right. I guess this concludes it. I want to thank again everyone who helped. That's all I got. I've said it before at the end of every council meeting. I'll say it now. And I really mean it. It's taken on a new meaning. Be well, Franklin. Bye-bye.